Better? Okay, so everybody over here, you stand up, move over here. Everybody over here, you stand up, move over here. I'm not going to even ask you to move closer. I'm going to be nice. I'm just going to say I'd like for you just to move over, make it a little bit more comfy, like a little bit more people are here. We have three more chapels. We have this coming Wednesday chapel, then we have Lessons and Carols on Friday evening at 7.30, and then we have baccalaureate service, so there's still plenty of chapel opportunities for you, so I want you to remember that and, and know that. So um, a, lot of, a lot of time for you to still get everything in. Can y'all move over to this section over here? Still see some people just sitting over there. Y'all yeah, weren't here when I made the announcement. I was saying if you could move over to this section, that would be great. It would help me out a lot. So they just didn't hear. They weren't they were coming in after I said that. So, All right, Dave Tolan has an announcement this morning. So, Dave? Good morning. I want to invite you to uh, Christmas caroling tomorrow night. We're leaving from the uh, square at... 620 and we'll be going to two different nursing homes in the area then we'll be coming back to this area and singing at some of the old, uh, older uh, homes for with with older uh, friends from southern wesleyan i'm trying to not older homes but <laughs> and uh uh, friends from Southern Wesleyan who graduated from here or, uh, you know, in the, in the community. And then we'll be making our way up Thomas Lane and singing at some of the homes there along Thomas Lane, ending at the President's House and singing there at the President's House. And they are planning to invite us in after we sing and uh, for hot chocolate and Christmas goodies and to see their Christmas decorations and such. We had a great time last time when we did this. So join us tomorrow, ni tomorrow night at 6.20 in the square. We'll be done somewhere around 9 o'clock, I think. Okay, thank you. Just take that down to Jane. We are in the season of Advent. Now, um, we don't follow the church year. In some, some places, we don't follow the church year very closely. But we're in the season of Advent. The word Advent means to come. And so it's during this season, the four Sundays prior to Christmas, that we prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ. Actually, Christmas Day begins Christmas season. Uh, do you, have you ever watched any old movies and the people are always putting their tree up on like Christmas Eve? Have you ever seen that? And you wondered, what are they doing? Why is it? Because not so long ago, that was considered the Christmas season. You put your Christmas tree up on Christmas Eve. It stayed up through the 12 days of Christmas. That's where we get the song from. And then uh, they would celebrate Epiphany, the coming of the wise men to see Christ. And so, um, so this time is not just after Thanksgiving, not just before Christmas. This is Advent. This is a time that we think about, prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ. And so some of, the, some of the traditional songs and hymns that we sing during this time speak to that, speak to our expectation, speak to the prophecy, speak to our thinking about it. And today, once again, I want us to have that kind of sense of thinking about Christ coming and what it means to us and how God prepared us, and even today how God prepares us for his coming in our hearts. So... Uh, today, we'll have this focus of sort of Advent. We're going to sing some songs that sort of reflect that. A little bit later, we're going to do some fun things um, with uh, Professor Dill, who's going to play the piano and take some requests from you. So you can start thinking now, Christmas songs, Christmas uh, carols, uh, whatever you, let's say, whatever you want that's appropriate to the Christmas season. And uh, she'll write them down, then she'll come up here and put them all together and play. It's a pretty fun thing that she can do. We'll do that, have devotions, and enjoy this time. So if you're able, let's stand, let's join our voices, let's sing together. Good morning, everyone. I hope you've had a wonderful Thanksgiving and you're looking forward to these few weeks um, before we're out for Christmas break. I know exams, yeah, exams come in there, uh, so I know we have a lot, a lot to get done. When we get the 
At the beginning of a semester, I always look at the chapel schedule, and you see all these chapels, and you're going, oh my goodness, we have all of these chapels, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're there, and it, has, it seems like it has come so quickly. But um, I am so reminded uh, when we cut to this, this season and this time of year about the 400 years of silence that was before the birth of Christ. And there was no message from the Lord and no nothing. And people were waiting and they were anticipating and, they were, and people were born and they died waiting for the coming of Christ. And then all of a sudden, one day he appeared. And it gives me just an altogether different perspective on God's timing because he does it when his time is right. So let's sing some of these um, Christmas songs and just, just let's kind of gather around the manger and just thank him for his great love and the price that he paid and the plan that he has uh, in coming to earth. This is um, a great Advent one. Come thou long expected Jesus. You'll see all the words on the screen. Let's sing. Come thou long expected Jesus born to set thy people free from sins release us let us find our rest in thee Israel strength and consolation hope of all the earth thou art dear desire of every nation for a bed the little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head the stars in the sky looked down where he lay the little Lord Jesus asleep on the of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see beauty that made this heart adore you hope of a life spent with you so here I am to worship here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. So Thy holy face with the 
dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Come and worship. How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Let's sing that one again. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Let's sing that last line again, Jesus Lord. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Let's pray together. God, we are thankful for this time of year that helps us to prepare. Lord, we want you to know that we are expecting you our stage is empty and simple. It is a starting point. Over the next week or so, it will fill up with instruments and decorations as we anticipate your birth. Lord, we pray that you would allow that to be the same in our hearts and our lives. Allow us to think through and to clean out some of the clutter. The Lord, allow us the daily more anticipate your birth. And Lord, even though you have been born in our hearts and our lives, we want it again and again. We want to know it, Lord, over and over. God, we pray today that you would be with those that are hurting, with those that are mourning, with those that are suffering. We pray, O oh Lord, for those today that uh, sometimes the holidays become difficult for them because of finances, because of memories, because of the loss that they feel in their hearts and in their lives. Be with those people today, Lord, and comfort them and allow us, O oh Lord, to bring your love and comfort to them in any way that we can. Lord, once again, Prepare us as we prepare for you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Professor Dill's going to come now. She's going to stand down here for uh, a few minutes. Uh, and here's the, here's the deal. She's, uh, here's the deal. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's funny. That's funny. Here's the thing. She's going to ask you for Christmas songs. Uh, carols, um, and she'll write them down, then uh, she'll put them all together and play them for us, and um, so here's your opportunity to hear some, some songs that you are your favorites or ones you haven't heard yet, uh, or ones that you would like to hear. So, come on, Professor Deal. need to do any oh no I don't okay <laughs> all right so um, these can be uh, secular songs we'll be able to put some of those in um, so if you will yell out I know I see a, if, raise your hand and if I oh holy night 
All right. Yes, ma'am. Jingle Bell Rock. Yes. What? Santa Baby. Okay. You sure you don't want to sing that? No. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll be home for Christmas. Yeah, yes. Feliz Navidad. <laughs> I can't spell it, but I'll put it on here. <laughs> yes, sir. Silver Bells. Oh, I see one over here. What? I don't know that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. Twelve days, and what was? It? Here comes Santa Claus. Oh, I knew that was coming. Here. In the booth. The Grinch. Can you hear? What? Me? The Grinch. How the Grinch stole Christmas. I'll, yeah. I'll try to do that one. Rudolph. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Miss Gail. Oh, that? Okay. <laughs> Nina. I don't think we have room. Okay. Rocking around the Christmas tree. I, can't think of the name. I think we might have too many. <laughs> Carol of the Bells. Cameron. Mary, did you know? Ave Maria, here from the back, back there. Professor Kurt wants Ave Maria. All right, I'm going to take one more right here in the hat. Oh, my goodness. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. I will do my best, and if I leave out one, uh, sorry. <laughs> what? Oh, Joe Brockington. <laughs> Great Christmas balls of fire. <laughs> that was a tradition once upon a time to do that. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens.
How do you recover from that? I can't get my foot up on the podium. I know my leg. I know I can't. I know there's just no way for that. Thank you. You have to be wired a certain way to be able to do that. Uh, if you're not a musician, you may not understand the talent that that takes, but that it's crazy. And um, I just, I love you. So This morning, for, I'd like for us to think for a few minutes just for a few minutes, about a couple of passages of Scripture. Um, Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through 7. And then I'd like for us to look at Galatians. In Luke chapter 2, verses 4 through 7, it says, Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went, there to Mary. he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And then in Galatians chapter 4, Verses 4 through 7. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of sons. Because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son and a daughter. And since you are a son and daughter, God has also, God has made you also an heir. If we were to be honest with ourselves, I think most of us right now, the dominant thing that is on our mind is time. It's time. Thinking about time. Do I have enough time to get those papers done? Do I have enough time to read all that collateral? Do I have enough time to finish those labs? Do I have enough time to get everything else done and the practicum hours that I need to get done? done? Do I have enough time to prepare for juries? Do I have enough time to prepare for my exams? Do I have enough time to grade those papers? Do I have enough time to read the collateral that was read and graded and the labs and the practicum and the exams and the juries? Do I have time to shop? Do I have time to get ready? Do I have time? Time is dominant on our minds right now. 24 years of ministry in college community, I know that that's dominant in our thinking. Time is a precious commodity to us. Time is something that, that is fleeting for us and that we all wish we had more of. And I want you to understand that, that this is not just for your generation. This has always been this way. People have always wanted to have more time. People have always felt like they were being rushed. And so it's not just a generational problem, but it's something that we all think about and all have to face. Even in Scripture, the people were faced and perplexed about time. Would a Savior come? When would a Savior come? Would there be one who would set us free? Would there be one who would release us from captives? Would there be one who would set up a righteous kingdom? When would this happen? And there's prophecy and expectation and thinking about time and the time that that would happen. 
The two scriptures we read today call us to think about this. It says, in the fullness of time, Christ came. And it says, the time had come for Mary to have her baby. When we think about these events, we think about uh, historically in New Testament and life and teachings and other places, you'll talk about all the things that seemed right for the birth of Christ. That there seemed to have been some silence in the church and, and this silence had, had people wanting to hear more and so they were ready and expecting and it was a good time for Christ to come. And we hear about how the, the Romans had taken over and about how the people of Israel were being sort of captive in, even in Rome, and that there was this peace, this Pax Romana that it's called, the peace of Rome, but it wasn't really peace. It was just military superiority. So they had a soldier on every corner, and so it wasn't really that people were full of peace. It's just that seemingly there was a lack of conflict because they were being ruled with such an iron hand. There are other factors that we think about, and we say that it was the right time. But here's something I want us to think about for just a moment this, today. It wasn't just that the events of the world were right for Christ to come. But it was that it was the right time for Mary and for Joseph. It was the right time for them. They were busy people. They had careers, they had lives, they were living life, they were doing the things that they were supposed to do in life as, as people who were growing up and people who were involved in their society, just like we are. They were involved in the activities of their day, just like we're involved with the activities of our day. And yet something was different. When the angel came to Mary, she gave herself to the call of God and said that she was the handmaiden of the Lord, that she would serve God. And when Joseph was spoken to and didn't know all that was going on and thought this was crazy that his wife that he was engaged to was now pregnant and what should he do, he listened and he obeyed. You see, the time was not just right for the world, but the time was right for them. We think back in, in Scripture, we, we know that there are some other events like this. The time of Noah. It wasn't just the sinfulness of the world that caused him to build an ark. It was also his availability to God of him giving his time to be willing to do that. It wasn't just the slavery of the Jews, but it was the leadership of Moses. It wasn't just the weakness of of the people, but it was the wisdom of Deborah that allowed her to be a judge. You see, God works micro and macro. God works in the world, but in our hearts as well. God works big and small. God works collectively and individually. And the writer, the writer Christoph Blumhart says that in that sense, and understand this, he says, in that sense, God's timing also depends on our willingness. God's timing also depends on our willingness. And so today we pause and think for a moment about time. And that we are crushed and pressed and pushed and wish we had more, and we'll get up early and stay up late and pull all-nighters and all those kinds of things. But I want to, you to be reminded today that in your life, in the busyness of what you're doing, in the craziness of what's going on, in the chaos of studying, in the end of the semester that some of us experience, there's also a God who is calling us, who is speaking to us. And in the midst of that craziness and confusion and chaos, may be calling us to listen to him. To not push him out, 
to not think that he's silent, to not think that he is so far away, but to think that he is here and now and present and wants to be a part of our lives. When you came in chapel today, I gave you, uh, or you were given a candy cane, or offered a candy cane. Most of you probably have eaten it by now, and that's okay. There's a lot of stories about the candy cane. I think we've talked about it before in, in chapel in the past years, but there are some people that say that the candy cane was made to look like a, a shepherd's crook so that it represented Jesus, the good shepherd. And so when, so when we would see candy canes, we would think about Jesus and uh, the Good Shepherd. That it's sweet because it reminds us of the goodness of God's love for us. That it's white and it's red because the red reminds us of the blood of Christ, that, that He willingly sacrificed His life for our salvation, and the white's the purity, that He changes our lives and can make us white as snow and take away our sin. And there are some who say that originally it wasn't a, a crook, but was to be a J, to stand for Jesus, as a reminder that Christmas is about Jesus and about Christ. Whatever stories those are, whether they're apocrypha or whether they're true, still it's a reminder to us that the Christmas season, the things that we see, things like lights and angels and evergreen trees and decorations and nativity scenes and even candy canes can be a reminder to us that in our own time God wants to speak to your heart and to your life. So I challenge you that as we prepare for the coming of the Christ child, as we get ready for Christmas time, as we think about it, as we have our devotions, as small groups go to church, as we, whatever it is that we do, may we be reminded that God's timing is not only for the world, but it's for us. That it's not only for the events of everyone, but it's for the individual. And that God wants to speak to us during this time and say to us those precious words of love that he has just for you, just for me. So my challenge is that as you see candy canes and as you see Christmas trees and as you see lights and stars and angels, that will not just be caught up in the beauty of them, but will be reminded that the God of time has time for us And that he wants to speak to us and change our hearts and draw us even closer to him this Advent season. God, thank you that you love us so much that you plan it all out for us. Thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you are concerned not only about the world, but about each one of us. And Lord, as we go through the rest of the semester, as we finish up, as we have exams, we should do those things, and we should be prepared in those ways. But even in those, O oh Lord, remind us that you love us, that you care for us, and that you want the best for us. And Lord, may we realize that the fullness of time is also dependent on us as we give our hearts and lives attention to and in that, Lord, you will love us with unending love and give us a glimpse into eternity that will fuel us and set us on fire for you even here. Go with us now, Lord, and speak to us, and may we hear your voice. In Christ's name we pray.